Hi everyone, and welcome to this bonus episode for the Skewed Cosmic Archaeologist Run. Uh, and if you haven't seen that series, then check out the playlist, which I've got linked in the card here, and I'll also have in the card at the end. But obviously, this run was mostly about rocketry. Uh, we were trying to get the Cosmic Archaeologist achievement, which we did manage to get. Uh, and then as a side quest, I was going to try and use all of the rocket engine types. Now we didn't quite succeed with that, there were some that we weren't able to get, the first one being the sucrose engine because we didn't have any sucrose on the entire planetoid. Uh, and then we also didn't manage to use the Rabbolt engine because we didn't have a lot of radiation uh, in order to make enough Rabbolts and it would have taken quite a while, so we didn't use that engine. And then the final one that we weren't able to use was the hydrogen engine which you can now see I've built. So uh, we started building the liquid oxygen and hydrogen setup during the run but we didn't manage to finish it in time we actually got the achievement first but i promised i would quickly have a look through this setup for you guys kind of as a little bonus episode so uh, welcome to that now this setup isn't much different really from the setup as i showed in the tutorial bite so i'm going to link that now as well if you want a more concise explanation then probably check that out but i thought i'd take you through this one quickly and we built this in the same way so we, we've got our liquid oxygen on the right and the hydrogen on the left we've got a steam turbine and one aqua tuner each for each room and then we're putting it through fine temperature control in a in diamond window tiles with some thermium uh pipes there so this is over chilling the brick on this side and then we've got the cold injectors which are controlling the flow into the into the rooms themselves to cool our materials down so the hydrogen and oxygen are coming from below we've got a little half rodriguez here which is feeding our oxygen line that's going to the rockets and to the liquid oxygen and then we've also got a little infinite storage gas room in here for the hydrogen we're pulling that from the hydrogen vent which is very useful because that actually provided a lot of hydrogen for this as well as some of the spawn overflow uh, that we've pulled in there as well uh, li liquid hydrogen is quite difficult to get because you need to make a lot of hydrogen to get it these rockets are very hungry um but the setup's quite similar. We've got ceramic pipes on here, so it took me quite a while to run this on and get the ceramic pipes. Just for reference, we're about 14 cycles on from the end of the run, and I haven't cheated. No debug or sandbox tools used. I did run this on in a relatively normal way, although focusing on this and not the other stuff. So uh, getting ceramic was one of the, the bigger tasks that took a little while to get, uh, just to build these. And of course, we're looping it, because if you let this sit in the pipes, even ceramic insulated pipes will still break. Uh, it will transfer too much heat to these very fragile liquids. Um, the other thing that also took quite a bit of time to get there was the research. Once we go for a quick save. So I had to add a, a whole second Rabbolt generator in here just to speed this up a bit. We did finally manage to get all of the materials science research to get the hydrogen engine. There is a lot of research to get this uh, in the last two tiers. So a bit of a pain there. We managed to get that going in the end. So we've got everything built and we're all fueled and loaded. So just to pick up on the design, we've got a fairly standard cooling loop. And if you want more information on that, I have the cooling tutorial by it, uh, which is a very important one if you aren't familiar with that. We've got our cooling loops running through, and then we're using the fine control with the doors just to be particularly precise with the hydrogen. Hydrogen is very fiddly, and the temperature range of the liquid is actually less than the 14 degrees range that you get in the Aquatuna. So having this fine temperature control is really, really helpful. It's not really needed on the oxygen side, but we've done it anyway, and it, it's not unhelpful, but you don't strictly need it because oxygen has a much wider temperature range. Note also that we've built this out of normal tiles because if you try and use insulated tiles, then you can actually end up with flaking, which is kind of a weird mechanic where heat gets transferred into them even though it shouldn't. So I find it easier just to use normal tiles and chill the tiles down as well. Uh, that's usually the easy way to do it. Another question I got uh, in the comments is around putting the oxygen and hydrogen together so why didn't well, I make this one brick and the reason for that is because the hydrogen is very fiddly particularly with this setup you're trying to overcool this block and there's not a lot of headroom to overcool beyond liquid hydrogen obviously it's so cold anyway so you're pretty close to absolute zero that means you want this as cold as possible and introducing even a small bit of heat from the oxygen it will still work it will definitely still work but it will just make this that much more difficult so for simplicity's sake i'd say keep the hydrogen to itself and also if you're cooling the turbines well you need to cool the turbines do that with the oxygen line don't do it with the hydrogen line keep everything in the hydrogen as cool as possible because uh, that will help you make as much as you need otherwise it gets very slow it gets very painful it starts turning to gas starts turning to solid and generally you're having a bad time so with the rockets all fueled and working, we should probably have a quick look at the hydrogen engine, which I, in general I think is the best engine in the game. You could also make an argument for the Rabbolt engine being a, 
as good, but the hydrogen is probably the best or if not tied best. And the reason for that is usually the range and the speed. So this thing can do 16 tiles with one fuel tank, uh, obviously with enough oxidizer. And if you put two of them, then you've got 32 tiles of range, which is absolutely huge. And just to put that into perspective with the star map, we go on here and choose our distance to the ed very edge of the star map. We can get there in 11 tiles. So this thing will easily go to the edge of the star map, uh, probably 12 right to the very corner, 12 and back, and still have four extra left over, which makes it perfect for telescoping around or visiting the point of interest that are further out than 10, because usually that's kind of the limit of the Rab Bolt and the large petroleum engine. So it's really great for that kind of deep space exploration. Uh, and it is also very fast. So if you want to use it for the 16 with the one fuel tank, then that will also allow you to build absolutely loads of stuff on here. You've got lots of height, and especially with the liquid oxygen, of course, in the space out DLC, liquid oxygen doesn't necessarily make you go further, but it lets you build more height. So this thing is two tiles high rather than the solid oxygen tank, which is five tiles high. So you get an extra building bonus. And saying if you use one tank with 16 tiles, then you have absolutely loads of space to build whatever you want on here to move things about. Or alternatively, you can let it go really, really quickly because the, the engines are quite fast, particularly if they're unburdened. Um, but that was it really. I, mean, I just kind of wanted to show off the, the liquid oxygen and hydrogen setup that we didn't quite manage to finish in the series. So I suppose the last thing that's left for me to do is launch this thing. And that pretty much wraps up this little bonus episode and the series. So a huge thank you for watching this little video and for the rest of the series. I really hoped you enjoyed it uh, and hopefully I will see you in the next series.